All right. So at the beginning of this episode, I'm going to try to say something, Etienne, and you're going to tell me how well I did. So are you ready? Yes. Que la force soy avec vous. Oh, I've got it. Merci beaucoup. Que la force soit avec vous. <laughs> yeah, I, one of my friends speaks French, and I was like, how do you say may the force be with you in French? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I it's think perfect. You, perfect, yeah. <laughs> see, I think you did an honorable job. Uh, very well, oh, much, yeah. much better than I would have, for sure. Um, absolutely. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, what's it like being a Star Wars fan, fan in, in France? Is it, is it like permeating the culture there? Or is it kind of like seen as an American thing or is it kind of a worldwide thing? Oh, I, I would say it's something really worldwide. Um, although it's really, uh, coming from America, of course. Um, but, uh, all of us, uh, I, I guess in the world, uh, we love Star Wars and, uh, no matter if we are French or Dutch or oh, sorry German, um, um, any country in the world who can reflect uh, in this uh, great journey can be a, f- a fan of Star Wars. So I guess it's okay. It's really cool. Yeah. So what was uh, your introduction to Star Wars? Uh, actually, it was when I was uh, seven. So uh, a very, very little uh, guy. <laughs> and uh, to be honest with you, my mother um, at this time forced me to watch uh, The Phantom Menace. Um, I, was, I-, I didn't want to go uh, watching this because I was by this time a very huge fan of uh, Titanic. And uh, I-, I-, I feared uh, <laughs> I couldn't uh, love both Titanic uh, universe and Star Wars universe uh, at the same time. So I didn't want to lose uh, my love for Titanic. And uh, in fact, I kind of lose it because Star Wars is just much more immense. So, so yeah, I still love, uh, you know, this, uh, this uh, film of the, the sinking boat. But uh, yeah, Star Wars is really, 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 really important to me. So that's how I discovered it. And honestly, once I was in the theater, uh, just watching at this uh, wonderful uh, universe, uh, the lightsaber, the pod racing, the uh, the, fin- the final ba- battle, battle, sorry, uh, and even Jar Jar Binks, which I personally do not hate at all. Um, hate, sorry, <laughs> it's not the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I I don't have a, a super uh, wonderful uh, English, uh, so I may speak some uh, some words um, non appropriately, but it's it's not intended. Uh, so sorry in advance uh, for that. Oh, I think um, your English is incredible. Don't worry at all. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So yeah, yeah. When I was uh, just uh, out of this. Uh, this uh, super uh, film session, I was like, okay, I, I love Star Wars. I want to see everything about Star Wars. So, and, and I remember as, as a kid uh, being um, constantly um, doing mistakes between uh, the Empire Strikes Back and the Phantom Menace. I don't know why, but to me, uh, both films were uh, taking place at the same time. And I, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. So it's really, <laughs> really, really curious. So I know, of course, I can make the difference between both, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, Star Wars has an interesting timeline. Uh, I remember when I was introduced to Star Wars, like I saw the first film released, uh, A New Hope, you know, and then... I kind of watched it over and over and over again. And then someone told me, have you watched five and six? I'm like, no, I just watched the first one. And then they're like, oh, one, two, and three haven't come out yet. And I was like, (laughs) what? (laughs) I don't know. It was silly. But so that's cool. You're you're a prequel kid uh, because I was kind of introduced a little bit before, like with the, VHSs of the original trilogy and mm. then 
I swear, like when I finally finished those, I saw the trailer for The Phantom Menace and uh, it kind of dawned on me that I would get to see one, two and three. So, yeah, it was kind of like your prequel background, not to jump too far ahead, but is that kind of why you wanted to focus like Star Wars Redemption on, on the prequel era? Uh, probably, yes. Um I, I really dig into, uh, you know, the clone troopers, the big battles uh, over Coruscant, uh, the Jedi fights uh, we, we got to see in these prequel uh, films. I really love this. And uh, the music also, the actors, uh, everything we can see into this, um, yeah, it, it inspired me a lot to jump into uh, first making 3D and, um, and yeah, just... Uh, Imagine new worlds. Uh, I think the, the the prequels did just a fantastic job at this. Um, if you just look at the episode uh, three, uh, the Revenge of the Sith, you you literally have, you literally have a lot of planets. Uh, I, I remember I saw um, an interview of one of the concept artists from this uh, film telling that uh, George Lucas came with uh, something like, okay, uh, create uh, 11 or 13 worlds and you're free to do whatever you want, but just uh, we need to have uh, all of these planets to uh, to tell the, the immensity, uh, the vastness of the galaxy. So, um, so yeah, it's really, really powerful uh, to, to see this and, and inspiring uh, at the same time. But the... the the main inspiration and uh, what made me actually uh, start Star Wars Redemption was probably, um, you know, in uh, like 10 years ago, exactly 10 years ago, um, I guess this was the time where, when uh, Disney just bought uh, Lucasfilm and uh, yeah. we learned that uh, the Clone Wars was stopped. And at this point, I just... Um, kind of learned about how cool the Clone Wars was. So I was like uh, watching every episode of it. And, uh, you know, when you come to uh, the end of this uh, fantastic series and uh, you just uh, learn that uh, this will stop because of uh, someone just acquired uh, Lucasfilm, you're like, oh, no, please, no, 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 no. I, I need to continue this uh, at some point. So I wanted to make, a uh, at first, a little short film uh, with Maven. And uh, not a game, not a trailer, just a, a little short film to to kind of encourage uh, maybe Disney to uh, start over again with uh, the Clone Wars, which was something I really loved. And uh, and I didn't retrieve this with uh, Rebels, e- even if I like Rebels uh, somehow. Uh, I, I still much prefer Clone Wars. Wow, that's. Oh, go ahead, Brian. Sorry. <laughs> I was I was going to say, yeah, that's that's amazing. It's incredible that you kind of fell in love with you know the Clone Wars, and it inspired you to go on and want to tell your own story in that way. I think that 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 is you know uh, really great, and uh, you know something something that uh, Cassie and I both can you know sort of identify with and wanting to you know continue on these stories and uh, tell more of these stories. So yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um... So kind of jumping back in the timeline, kind of taking our inspiration from Star Wars timeline, you know, but uh, mm-hmm. what what got you into game design? Um, actually, crafting games. Um, but may- maybe not. Maybe, uh, maybe it was when I, uh, when I was uh, making mods uh, for the Battle of the Mid... Battle for Middle Earth, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, it's an old game from uh, Electronic Arts um, mm-hmm. where you, you got to play some uh, strategic uh, games. And, uh, and at this time, um, I discovered how you could just modify entirely a game uh, going through code. And uh, I just love this uh, a lot. You know, when you are at school uh, learning uh, physics, maths, and, uh, and stuff like this, and it's Honestly, it, it was super boring to me. So, so yeah, when I when I went out of school, uh, just uh, I, I had the, the choice to play uh, video games or um, 
to modify them and play less uh, of the game. But I, I just love uh, being able to create my own uh, battalions, my own uh, heroes, my own uh, trees of uh, spells, etc. In, inside of this game, and it's it, it was really really uh, amazing. And I, I thought at this time maybe maybe I could uh, somehow get into programming uh, to later just make games uh, myself. But I was also kind of uh, intrigued by um, the, the, the modeling part of it. Because, you know, the, when you make a game, you have the programming part, which is really, really important to run your game. But you also have all the graphic stuff, like uh, building uh, an uh, environment full of uh, trees, or uh, uh, making characters, VFX, etc. And um, when you don't know anything about this, it, it just feels magical and uh, unreachable uh, at all. So I thought, okay, I I tried modeling uh, on Blender and it, it was really, really uh, crap by the time. I still have screenshots somewhere, but <laughs> yeah, I, I don't display them. But uh, I, I was a bit uh, discouraged by uh, how difficult it was to just um, come up with... Um, all the skills required to just make uh, a chair, a simple chair, uh, while you can code uh, battalions and armies, etc., um, more easily, um, kinda. So yeah, first I, I wanted to orient myself uh, toward this, and then I discovered this school uh, that basically trained you to um, model stuff, and I was like, okay, you can make. Um, 2D characters in 2-3D, like the, the Disney character we all know. Um, mm. the, the school was uh, like uh, showcasing uh, students in the first year um, being able to uh, to turn your favorite characters into 3D. And I was like, okay, okay, you're not making a, sh a chair, you're, you're making something much, 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 much more difficult. And you're just in the first year. So maybe this... This this could help a lot uh, on what I, I I would like to do. I got into this school. I learned uh, how to make 3D, how to make uh, concept art. Uh, I studied uh, anatomy. I studied uh, animation also and VFX. Uh, but this school was not tailored to make you a game artist. It was there more to make you a uh, um, how can I say this? Uh, VFX artist or uh, Pixar artist. You know, you, you, you are not about making games, but more films. So I spent three years learning how to craft beautiful models, but not how to optimize them, how to replicate them inside of a game engine, etc. So after this, uh, I had the opportunity to join a uh, game studio where I learned uh, how to make games, actually. So all the technical stuff required to make your models compatible with game engines uh, came out from there. Uh, from there, and uh, at the same time, more or less, um, I, I already um, modeled uh, Maven in her very first version, and uh, yeah, I discovered a, a fantastic software to animate her, uh, which is called Akitsu. Uh, if you follow me on the on Instagram or stuff like this, you, you probably know uh, this software. I, I, I love talking about this. Um, but this one just allows me to take the Maven made for a short film to a Maven made made for a video game. And I, I just started like uh, making a uh, walk cycle, run cycle, jump, idle, etc. Uh, just basic uh, animations. So I have a uh, playable character around which I could build a lot of environments. And the game Star Wars Redemption uh, just started like this. So I didn't have a vision of the game design itself because I'm not a game designer, uh, first of all. I, I'm a, a 3D modeler and artist. Year after year, um, the game design you know uh, today uh, on Star Wars Redemption just took shape. Um, Gradually. And lastly, I've been uh, a lot more into uh, blueprint, so programming, uh, than in uh, artistic stuff, uh, just to bring more and more and more uh, game design uh, points into uh, Star Wars Redemption. So it's, it started in uh, 2021 uh, as a 
exploration game, which a lot, uh, not a lot, some uh, some players uh, hated at some point uh, because they expected to have combat, etc. But um, mm -hmm. it was simply not possible for me at this time. And uh, two two years after, uh, we brought with the, the friends helping me on the, the blueprint part, etc. Sorry, we, we brought the fighting system and now I, I just uh, keep refining uh, all those uh, components to have something really uh, cool to, to, to mess with. Even even if it just, uh, it's just a demo, I want the players who are experimenting it uh, just having fun as long as they uh, stay on the demo. So basically, you can play at the same level for uh, hours. Uh, the units will respawn. Uh, you will still have the, the fear to, to lose all your uh, hit points, uh, etc. So, yeah, making a game that uh, I would have fun with and entertain players uh, the simplest way I could was also an objective, but it came really late in the production. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Um, I, I think that it's... That it's really interesting that you got into kind of you know video game design and and modding and then the art came second which is just incredible to me because uh i am uh by no means any sort of uh, artist at all so i think that that stuff is uh really fascinating um for the for the game design then uh talking about star wars redemption uh we talked a little bit about that you um had kind of you know you were a big fan of clone wars and that kind of inspired you uh to do you know kind of the short film which led into Star Wars Redemption, were there um, video game influences that uh, kind of led the way that you wanted the game to look and play? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, probably uh, I would say uh, Rayman 2. Rayman 2. Rayman 2. Yeah. Uh, the Great yeah. Escape from uh, Ubisoft. Uh, yeah. You know, these little flying creatures uh, and the, the fact that this game was really uh, contrasting between uh, the nature environments and the pirates um, kind of um, investigated uh, investing it yeah uh, yeah so like a little virus uh, and I, I wanted to have some kind of mix between um, the nature so the forest of Lumberia and the, the republic or empire uh, installations so you can see some clones, some uh, metal panels, etc. Uh, it's quite discreet. Uh, you have most of them at the beginning of the level, if I remember well. But um, uh, yeah, I, I love this mix, and uh, also I love just the uh, the looms uh, in Rayman. So I wanted to have some kind of uh, Easter egg uh, uh, just to refer to this game, and then uh, for the Star Wars uh, inspiration. Uh, to me, it's the Force Unleashed. Uh, maybe Force Unleashed 2, uh, just because the gameplay is more nervous uh, here. And uh, of course, the character have also two lightsabers, like Maven. Um, but I like the, the way you have a uh, super overpowered uh, control of the Force inside of this game. Um, I wanted to replace, the at some point, the uh, Lightning Bolt uh, ability of um, Starkiller by the... the uh, gunsling uh, fights. Uh, like, if you play the game and you just let Maven uh, alone uh, doing her idol, at some point, she will play random idols and you will see uh, her grabbing a, a blaster on some of them. Uh, that's just because Maven initially was uh, made to use blasters like we have with Carl Kestis in the uh, Jedi Survivor. Which is kind of funny because I, I've seen a lot of parallels between the Jedi uh, Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor, and Star Wars Redemption along the, the years. So I kind of think either we had the same uh, good ideas, or maybe, maybe, maybe uh, Star Wars Redemption or even inspired them a little. But I, I don't know uh, if that's true or not. <laughs> so <laughs> I hope it is, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. I I love he hearing you know kind of the kind of the background and the inspirations for for all of that. And um, I'm here uh, looking on your uh, your Instagram right now, uh, which people should follow because it has a bunch of uh, the artwork and other game design stuff you do. It's at uh, 
uh vex od 14 uh but it looks like yeah. uh mavens even uh even has a cosplay uh going what was what was that like yes. seeing seeing this uh character you uh created and animated uh come to come to life what is that like oh uh, well, it's it's just uh I, it's a curious feeling it's wonderful it's, it's just wonderful yeah. um so first seeing someone uh you you just don't know uh having so much love for the character you created um actually making a, a cosplay out of it it's just it, it's amazing I, I don't have words for this it's it's really grateful it's uh yeah it's it's a special thing a very special thing and uh uh the, the person who uh impersonate if i may say this i'm not sure it's the correct word but uh, who is playing Maven, if I, yeah, it should be better. Um, I met her um, like one week before she, she get the costume. So I, initially uh, I was meant to uh, to really uh, see the costume uh, when she, she first wore it, but uh, she had a little delay and uh, she couldn't just show me this armor uh, live. So I only saw them, uh, so all the pieces, etc. Uh, just through photo at the moment, so so yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it's just super cool. Even just in photos, etc. And she she does a really cool job at just uh, uh, imagining by uh, herself what Maven could look like in certain situations, etc. With uh, other clones, with uh, uh, some uh, I've seen actually some uh, uh, Millennium Falcon uh, interiors, etc. Uh, at the uh, Star Wars celebration. She, so yeah, and she met uh, Ewan McGregor. So it's it's really 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 awesome. <laughs> really awesome. That's very cool. Kind of going from there, like what inspired the look of Star Wars Redemption? I would say uh, so Clone Wars, of course, uh, because first of all, uh, when I was at school learning tree, etc., um, I met her in my last year of school. And uh, at this point, uh, we were learning learning uh, how an art direction works, uh, like how you uh, thought about your texturing process, uh, your modeling process, where you will make uh, hard edges, where you, you will pinch the the, the the model, where you will uh, yeah you smooth it, etc. And um, when I looked at the Clone Wars, you you can feel a lot of design choices and art direction choices uh, like uh, it, it's it's obvious but it's logical like the 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 brush strokes the uh, the colors um the the shapes of the models they all have some very interesting consistency and uh yeah it, this inspired me uh, first of all to just uh, craft maven um also seeing someone making uh, clone troopers Years after uh, the episode two was uh, shown, and uh, and, uh, and and not something uh, like uh, coming from the original trilogy, because I personally felt like uh, the the prequels uh, were kind of um, avoided uh, by the, the Lucasfilm staff or maybe Disney. But uh, yeah, so seeing just uh, someone like Dave Filoni. Uh, showing the love for the clones it was like okay i, I need also to 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 share it it's, it's just uh so, so cool and the design were so inspiring so yeah i wanted to do this uh at first but then um i discovered a game called overwatch i, <laughs> I imagine mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. you and the audience know well, it's game and uh, i i just love the animation uh, style and the art style itself, which is much more simple, uh, simpler than uh, um, what we have in the Clone Wars. You have also brush strokes, it's true, but it's it's playing more on the uh, on gradients of colors, of shadows, light, etc. It's more subtle, and you have also more um, uh, surfacing effects, like when you have some metal uh, surface and plastic surface. Uh, with some details in the worthness, etc. It's really more uh, detailed and technically uh, advanced than what we have in the Clone Wars. So I wanted to combine both uh, worlds. And I, I was like, okay, I'm not making a short film anymore. 
I mean, I'm making a game, so it's it's fair to use game techniques to mm -hmm. render uh, surfaces. But I wanted to have a balance between both. I didn't want to go as simple as Overwatch at some point, if I may say so. I mean the um, the colors, etc. You don't have the noise of the brush strokes in Overwatch. It's really if, even that you can have some, but it's really controlled. If you look at the Clone Wars, it's really messy, but it's uh, it's vivid. It's it's really really vivid. You can really imagine every part of a uh, prop or a, a character. Um, you you can feel how it lived through ages. So it's really important to to me. It was really important to mix both uh, sides. So yeah, brick by brick, I, I just built this, and uh, there you have the. The mix of both uh, being Star Wars Redemption. Yeah, what excites you the most about Star Wars Redemption? I would say uh, what I could learn. You know, I made this project uh, as a side job, so it means like uh, you are working uh, on weekends, holidays, and uh, an evening, and sometimes uh, at night. Because by day you have a job and uh, and yeah you just have some uh, spare time to experiment in this project and I wanted to use it as a uh, learning sandbox. So if I don't have uh, things to learn on it, it's more difficult to me to get uh, invested in into what I will do. For example, if I were to do uh, texturing again without uh, evolving the, and uh, improving the technique, I will make, I will take more time to achieve it than I, I, sh I usually do. So, so yeah, first thing would be uh, the, the learning uh, points I, I could, uh, I could uh, dig into. Um, then, uh, of course, it's Star Wars, like uh, uh, having your own uh, N1 Starfighter it's really oh, yeah. beautiful. It's not like downloading one uh, that already exists. Like here, you you will learn all the the curves of the, the spaceships and try to to get it right, and then you will integrate it in the engine, uh, add the VFX, add the uh, gameplay uh, functionalities, and uh, actually pilot it. And it's really 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 fun to to just do this. So yeah. It looks like an, an incredible project, and it's impressive that uh, it's a fan project. Uh, what are the kind of rules that you have to follow when it's when you're kind of like delving into an established like IP like Star Wars, and it's a fan project? Mm, I would say um, avoid uh, uh, ripping assets at all costs. Like uh, in Star Wars Redemption, the only thing that could be ripped, uh, I took it on YouTube to be honest, but uh, uh, I guess it's ripped at first, but uh, are the, the uh, sound parts. Uh, not all the sounds. Uh, I did a few myself. Uh, and in the last version, I even dubbed uh, uh, mushrooms. So if you walk into mushrooms, you will hear some curious voices and it's, it's just me uh, having fun with my mic. So, um, but yeah, uh, inevitably, if you are making a Star Wars fan game, having John Williams uh, music at some point is uh, mandatory, I would say. Um, unless you are as good as John Williams, which is uh, quite rare, uh, I would say. Uh, I think it's okay, kind of okay to, to use uh, this music. Um, but then if you are uh, also uh, ripping assets from uh, old games, um, like models, textures, etc., even if you redo them after all, I think it's, it, it's fairly bad, uh, especially thinking that uh, the, the goal of this game is to make you learn stuff. So ripping assets is a bad thing uh, for, for many, in many ways. So, um, so yeah, avoid this. Avoid recreating a game that uh, existed in the past. Like I inspired from the Force Unleashed uh, one and two and Rayman, but I didn't recreate the Force Unleashed two. It's not the same character. It's not the same story. It's not the same art direction. 
not the same capabilities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A lot of things uh, changes. Um, I think uh, as long as you inspire and don't copy, it's it's fair. It's okay. Um, and then uh, keep in mind that uh, you are working uh, for free, so you won't ever sell any part of the project. Um, and the the team you will come up with, uh, like the friends I have on this project, are not uh, the the guy who initiated the project, who hold it, uh, who um, how to say this motivates uh, the, the the project to go much further. Uh, so expect to carry a team, basically. Yeah. So is it, is your team uh, making Star Wars Redemption two people, or are there a couple more? Oh, there are a couple more, but um, I would say we've been uh, up to six or seven persons on it, but not yeah. at the same time. And uh, except me, uh, the, the, the friends who helped me uh, were working on a, a single field on the project. For example, uh, I have uh, Thomas uh, Chomel, uh, who most of the time animates Maven, and uh, sometimes he, he can animate a few things more, but he mostly animated Maven for uh, the game and the trailer. Um, I even also animate Maven when uh, when uh, required and when he just don't have time. That's also something really important to keep in mind that uh, the, this project being your baby, you are okay to spend a lot of time in it. This is not the case of your coworkers. Of your mates, um, so so yeah, he did, he did mostly animation, but uh, I helped him a lot on this part. I've got uh, other friends who are more on blueprints, and uh, I still help them uh, on this part. Not at the beginning because I didn't know um, by by then how uh, blueprint worked. Same for animations. At first, it was extremely uh, invaluable how uh, Thomas could uh, just tackle uh, Maven's animations when I could not. Um, but now I can also animate uh, not as, as well as he does, but uh, because Thomas is a full-time animator, so it, he's much better than I am. But uh, I can like uh, animate all the clones. It's okay. Uh, it will look good enough for the demo. Uh, I can animate some shots in the trailer, uh, given the fact there are not uh, too many uh, complex movements. So if you look at the trailer, uh, I, I did a lot of shots in the trailer, but all those uh, I, I did were quite simple. Like you have linear movements, um, uh, static cameras, and uh, no complex angles. Sometimes uh, a lot of characters, but they don't move much. If you look at what uh, Thomas animated on this uh, trailer, so it, it's all the shots on uh, Genesis at the end. Um, you have a lot of characters everywhere. Uh, you have droids, clones uh, flying around, etc. Maybe least slicing them. Um, it's it's a lot more difficult than what I achieved uh, before. So, so yeah, and same for Blueprint, the, the guy who achieved, uh, for example, the random Jedi. Uh, making this was really, 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 really complex. And I actually, uh, may, maybe I could uh, achieve this today because I, I think I kind of have the, the knowledge uh, to recreate this myself, but um, I still have probably some, um, not black hole, but yeah, some some hole of knowledge. <laughs> I don't know how mm. to say this, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's important to have the, the good persons to work with, but keep in mind that uh, yeah, they, they can't help you uh, every day, every time, like you uh, do on the project. Um, so so yeah. So most of the time, I I used to say I'm uh, alone on the project. Most of the time. Yeah. Um. So you said you were inspired by Clone Wars and then Star Wars Redemption kind of 
had its genesis as like a short film and um so it sounds like you've been working on Star Wars Redemption as a game. Was it since 2021? Um, it was in 2017. Uh, okay. Early 17. Yeah. yeah. I started Maven in uh, 2013. Uh, okay. But uh, yeah, the game really started to take shape in my head in uh, early 2017. Yeah, that that's so cool. It it shows your dedication to the idea, and um, I mean, there's some projects that I I've been like had a genesis of for like kind of like in my head, and then it it sometimes it takes a while to like conceptualize it, put it on paper, and produce it. You know, it's been ten years uh, of my career uh, doing this game. It's cool, but I think mm -hmm. maybe. And probably, I would say, in the future, uh, I would keep this just as a, a personal learning sandbox. Maybe I would push some uh, new uh, updates because I fixed uh, some parts of the uh, of the game. But uh, I don't think in, it could ever become a uh, full fledged game, um, not as as I uh, envision it. So yeah, and it, it's better at some point, I guess, to just create another character, another world, and move on. I've progressed much, 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 much faster in the last two uh, years uh, than the eight uh, previous. Just because you you, know, you learn a lot, of, a lot of stuff, you have the technologies also advancing uh, much. And now with uh, AI and stuff like this, we can more or less fear that uh, maybe in 10 years, uh, and I, I won't like this uh, to be honest with you, but probably in 10 years, you, you would be able to just... Uh, Ask ChatGPT, for example, okay, make me uh, in a Star Wars game uh, set in this period and uh, with uh, this kind of gameplay, etc. Et et uh, the the, the ChatGPT will generate you the whole game and you would be happy with your own uh, your own game. Shortly, um, like maybe in one year, I guess, uh, I will switch to something else. And honestly, it's, it's been like uh, three or four years that. I think about uh, letting Star Wars Redemption just because I feel uh, I could create more than uh, this game. Even, even if it's a cool project, I love working on this. And it's really amazing how people just like the, the, the concept. Um, I can't help my, myself just thinking about what could I create if I were making my own universe with my own limits. Uh, my own likings. Uh, for example, I, I really love uh, the Lord of the Rings uh, stuff, the Eric fantasy stuff, uh, skeletons, dragons, dungeons, etc. And that's why you have a uh, little uh, dungeon in the demo in the bonus levels. Uh, because I wanted to have this. With clone, it's super cool. You have the, the potions, the scrolls, and the, the barrels, <laughs> etc. And you have clones instead of this. It's really fun. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I kind of I, I want to just explore this part of uh, what I could create. So maybe it will it will suck. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I mean that that's that's a good point. Like, it's great that you've learned uh, so much working on this project. But like, sometimes it's nice to create your own stories rather than something that like. Uh, playing in a new universe that George Lucas came up with and, and Disney now owns, you know? So I I like that you have that perspective mm -hmm. and it sounds like you, you've learned a lot working on this project. First off, I think that it's um, it's really neat and interesting that you, you got into Star Wars and it kind of inspired you to make this project, which is, you know, now kind of in turn inspiring you to create other projects and, you know, tell your own uh, stories and, you know, create your own worlds. And I think that that is, um, that's really interesting. We're definitely excited to uh, see more of what you've got coming in the future in terms of, of these own stories and uh, definitely going to, going to be keeping an eye on that. But um, to, to get back to uh, Star Wars Redemption, maybe um, just to, to talk about a little bit, you know, for people who are, maybe aren't familiar with the project or haven't had a chance to to play it or go onto your YouTube channel and uh, watch it all. Maybe just kind of before we, uh, you know, uh, move on here. Uh, it, is there 
kind of a, a base story of Star Wars Redemption or what kind of um you know, what kind of kind of journey uh can you expect to go on um if you're uh looking into this Star Wars Redemption world that that you've come up with for everyone? Mm. Publicly, um, this, there is no real story. Uh, at some point, it's just um, fun levels spent, uh, uh, spared, sorry, uh, across uh, a timeline I have in my head. It's not like uh, in Jedi Survivors, the you know a story connected uh, through all levels, etc. Uh, because again, I, I'm alone, so making this with cinematics, etc., it's really really complex. It will take a lot of time, especially uh, based on what I would like to tell. But uh, the story, as you can see it in the demo, uh, it's just about a Jedi uh, evolving through uh, the Battle of Genesis first, then uh, having some infiltration, um, some uh, spy stuff. You, you get into a Luke Hulk, you, you smash some dreads, etc. Um, then you get uh, betrayed by your clones uh, during uh, Order 66 on your Venator. So uh, you get to kill clones. Initially, we were uh, like, uh, wanted to allow player to pilot, uh, to pilot uh, the Starfighter of Maven to just escape the Venator and, and uh, um, make it crash. So you're not, mm. uh, you're not sued by your, by your clones. Um, but, uh, it, it was just too complex. So it's just a, a level here where you can, uh, while playing randomly, uh, be hit by the order 66. And I guess most of the players who experienced it were just surprised by it as Maven would have been. And uh, some died. <laughs> some died just because whoa, 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 all these clones are. Turn against, uh, adjust against me, and I, I wasn't ready, and I just died. And uh, yeah, it, it was really uh, fun to just bring this into the game. Then you 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 go into the Jedi Temple to save a few of your uh, Jedi friends if you can, um, and then you go back on your um, your home uh, planet, which is Lumberia, to explore uh, an ancient temple. Uh, where where we we will have some uh, really really old uh, force masters, which weren't called uh, thieves or Jedi by uh, their time, and huh. uh, but this is all you, you can guess it by just watching at this. Uh, you have some portraits of these uh, characters in the temple, um, which can give you an idea of uh, what kind of uh, people they they were. I want to. If, if we dig more into the, the story I would like to tell with Star Wars Redemption, it, it would have been like two different uh, and quite big timelines. I would uh, like to have uh, the Mevens timeline, so starting before the Phantom Menace on Lumberia with her uh, parents, etc., um, discovering uh, her sensitive power through an uh, exploration uh, journey where they find actually the temple and a, a very old tomb uh, of a force master, which is an ancestor of Maven. Uh, this just um, awakes some uh, powers she, she she didn't know uh, before. So her parents are uh, both Jedi, uh, coming from uh, Coruscant, etc. They're being uh, just um, um, not consoled, but uh, sent away or revoked from the order uh, just because they love each other, etc. You know, the, you, you don't have the right to love, etc. when you are a Jedi, so they are expulsed from the Jedi order. Um, so they come back to Liberia, have a, a, a kid, children, uh, which is Maven. Um, maybe more. I, I'm, I'm not sure if, if this would be interesting or not to, uh, for Maven to have some uh, sisters, brothers, etc. Uh, she would have to save at some point for, from the Empire. Uh, that would be cool, but I didn't explore much this part in the scenario part, uh, part of the, the project. Um, but yeah, they have Maven. They don't know if she is really force sensitive or not. Um, but one day everything happens. Uh, she discovers her power, but also a uh, dark part of this power. And uh, then the Jedi Order came in 
get me then train her uh, just to to uh, canalize uh, focus her uh, her mindset uh, around the light part of the uh, the force on Coruscant. So then you have some uh, diplomatic missions like Obi Wan and Qui Gon in the Phantom Menace, but before the Phantom Menace. Um, so I don't know precisely where uh, I'm not sure about the master uh, I would like to have uh, for Maven. And uh, by the way, I'm, I'm helped by a friend uh, which name is uh, Aurélien Barche. Um, he helped me a lot in the scenario part of uh, Star Wars Redemption because he knows a lot more stuff on Star Wars Extended Universe than, uh, than I do. Um, I'm actually quite limited, to be honest. Um, I know a lot of games, I would say, uh, the films, okay, the series, but then uh, the books, the uh, comics, a few comics, but uh, yeah, it's pretty limited. And uh, some YouTube videos about uh, characters I would like to dig in, into, but yeah, Aurelien has a lot more uh, knowledge about this. So I, I always ask him, okay, uh, what could we do at this period of time with this character, etc. And he helped me adjust uh, cementing all of this. Um, then we have a, a part of the story through the uh, events of the prequels, so the Clone Wars, uh, the Order 66, etc. Um, after Order 66, Beven uh, tries to uh, help her parents uh, back on Umbria against uh, the Empire and the Inquisitors. Uh, they kill Beven's parents, uh, by the way. Uh, then Beven just decides to get out of the empire and rebellion uh, conflict just because she feels she's not at her place uh, any longer being in fights etc and she she joins a uh, independent group composed of former clones like uh, her uh, lieutenant uh, red joes which has been turned into a um, semi machine uh, a cyborg uh, by the uh, CIS uh, back in the Clone Wars. Um, so yeah, it's pretty dense. And then uh, after this, they make some uh, some rescue missions, etc. It's like like the rebellion, but at a smaller scale. Scale, and they don't just fight against the Empire; they just try to help uh, whoever they can. Um, and so here you would go with uh, a team composed of uh, not just Maven and clones, but uh, it could be Maven and one former clone, maybe her apprentice, which uh, who is definitely a cyborg uh, after uh, after a few years. And uh, and at some point, uh, Maven would turn into a uh, bounty hunter because I, I just love the the idea of having her with. Uh, Kind of a Mandalorian uh, armor, uh, but not really a Mandalorian one. But uh, you know this uh, Boba Fett uh, feeling, like you, you are uh, roaming the galaxy just for your uh, own interest. And Maven's interest would be kind of close to uh, Mandalorian, to uh, Dinjarin. Like she internally keeps wanting to help people uh, in danger, etc. And uh, she does this just to uh, redeem for all the folks they uh, they uh, harmed during the Clone Wars, etc., and all the fights she lived uh, through uh, these dark times. And I don't know how she dies, but at some point she, she would have to die. But I didn't write this part yet. Wow, that's a, that's a really cool story. It kind of goes from, like, pre-Phantom Menace, like, up to, like, post-Revenge of the Sith, and, like, it kind of goes through all these different cycles. So uh, mm. that's really cool that you came up with that. One thing I wondered is, why is it titled Redemption? First of all, because I I, I thought the title was good. <laughs> so for a lot of uh, cases in this project, I, I came up with the idea uh, visually before um, before finding the reason why. It's, uh, for example, why uh, Maven is called Maven. Uh, uh, first, it was like uh, I, I wanted to have something close to Qui-Gon Jinn uh, because the, the 
uh, writing of the name has something really interesting in this uh, double N. Um, and uh, and yeah, I I, tr I tried uh, uh, different names and then uh, Maven came out, came out like okay, it's a, it's the best one uh, out of a pool of name I I have uh, tried um, to mix. Um, and then I was like, okay, guys, does this name uh, be okay with you? Like the guys, the, the friends I have uh, at school, etc. I, I went through their feedbacks just to see if I could get something better, etc. And no one told me Maven was not good, so I kept this name. And for Redemption, it's, it's kind of the same. Like uh, I put this name, I was like, okay, it's temporary, but it was temporary for uh, like uh, five or six years. And so now I guess it's, it's no longer temporary, it's the name of the project and and, uh, and we have to deal with that. And then I, I was like, okay, uh, so the story should be about Redemption. So I guess that when you see a Jedi and um, her army of clones, um, ruining uh, a world because it, it's kind of this like when the Jedi come uh, on Geonosis for example they they destroy a lot of structures maybe we can see them as uh, foes uh, just because they uh, they are side by side with the droid army but maybe you have a lot of Geonosians that just don't want a war at all and and uh, yeah we saw this in Rebels if I'm correct uh, with the last Geonosian who tried to keep an egg, um, mm. like it's it's the the last one of the the, the, the folk, uh, the Geonosian folk, and uh, I, I think it could it it can be a good angle to to start with um, about the redemption of Maven and how she tries to repair a lot of broken lives uh, she she was partly responsible for. Um, during the war. Yeah, that that's interesting. Uh, sometimes we we choose titles and then we kind of find ways that the story actually kind of fits them, or sometimes we start with the story first and then we get the title. Um, were there any other questions you wanted to ask, Brian? Um, no, but I think, um, well, we kind of hit on uh, you know, now Star Wars Redemption, you've you've done a lot of work and spent a lot of time kind of in creating this world and uh, you want to get out and uh, do kind of your own um, your own stories, your own original um, ideas and things. Do you have anything? Um, it looks like here on your uh, YouTube at the end that you have um, some videos about some different assets being made for for a couple of things uh, here. Do you have. Uh, stuff in the works right now? Or are you still kind of in the planning process of uh, doing your next project? Or I guess what is kind of a what's kind of an update of what you have? I guess going forward from Star Wars Redemption. I would say I uh, I will gradually let down Star Wars Redemption, but I won't. Uh, you know, I, tomorrow I, I won't just let this uh, fall and uh, I'll skip to my new project. Um, it, it will be yeah progressive. Um, but I've already started yeah, uh, thinking about uh, a new universe, a new world with new rules. Um, I have like yeah, some ideas of a uh, musical uh, base for the magic of this world. So it's, uh -huh. it's really special, but uh, yeah, it's, it's still really nebulous in my head. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying some stuff and, and uh, see if okay this makes sense or uh, this. Not really, etc. And I'm also designing new characters um, just on paper uh, at the moment. It's where I just feel the most uh, free. Um, like I, I can go uh, out and with a uh, block of paper, a pen, and just sit somewhere and imagining uh, new characters. It's really cool, actually. And uh, it's currently um, really oriented towards uh, knights. Um, sorcerer, uh, magicians, uh, creatures, fantastic creatures, forest uh, creatures, uh, uh, some stuff with mushrooms again, <laughs> because I, I've got a bug with mushrooms. I don't know why, but uh, mushrooms in schools. So imagine having skeletons made of mushrooms, not something like Last of Us, of course, okay. because I want something 
kind of uh, lyric. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I want to, to to dig into this kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I start with these uh, kind of ideas and, and see how this can fit. But also, um, I still have in mind a few ideas of uh, animated uh, shots of uh, Star Wars Redemption. Um, I don't know uh, when I will do them. I, it, it requires some time just to animate the, this uh, uh, cinematic shots. So actually, we have an uh, anime challenge uh, running under the Star Wars theme. So I want to participate. It's just for the current month, so I have like uh, 20 days to complete. But I have the ID. I have the, the casting, if I may say so. I have a lot of uh, characters I can mess with, so it's, it's quite cool. Um, but yeah, I, I need to find the, the inspiration to get this done well. Um, and also, I still want to bring, uh, how to say this, uh, to finish uh, the path I've started on Star Wars Redemption. I, I think, for example, the flying combat could be better, like have an objective that uh, motivates the player to avoid uh, shots, to avoid uh, crashes. Um, I've, I'm thinking about uh, some time attack uh, game, game design and stuff like this. Um, and uh, perhaps perhaps um, bringing more um, lore to the Lumberia uh, maps. I would like to, for example, see a, a capital a city far away, but just mm. feeling that, okay, you are really deep in the, in the forest, in the nature. The civilization is far away this way. And, uh, and yeah, you can feel a bit more like a, a little Indiana Jones or, a, or Lara Croft. Um, oh, cool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But yeah, one, once this will be done, uh, I probably won't add uh, another level or uh, another character or stuff like this, you know. Um, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. How can our listeners follow and support what you do? Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we'll put the link to uh, uh, to the Instagram and the YouTube and the um, art station pages down in the uh show description and on the uh, YouTube video there as well. So make sure, yeah, you definitely go and give it a follow because yeah, all of this artwork and uh, the trailer and everything there is incredible. And I absolutely love the way that you're um, telling these stories through, you know, kind of this world building uh, medium of, uh, of video games and, you know, concept art and stuff like that. It's just absolutely fantastic. So make sure you, everyone listening out there, go give this, uh, give this a follow and, and share it and like, and uh, support it, do all those things. Thank you so much for being on. I would try to speak more French, but I, I would just be afraid I would say the wrong thing. <laughs> no, uh, it's okay. It's okay. You can <laughs> go on. It's really okay. That's right. That's how, that's how we learn, Cassie. We got to we gotta try new things. Um, and yeah, absolutely. So thank you again. Uh, yeah, to echo what Cassie said, thank you so much, Etienne, for uh, coming on today. We appreciate it and uh, big fans of your project. And hopefully more people see it and excited to see what you come up with uh, next for everyone. Thank you. And uh, thank you a lot for this invite. Uh, I really appreciated the, the time with you guys. Thank you, everyone out there. And may the force be with you. May the force be with you. May the force be with you.